Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a stock that recently announced earnings that is growing pretty quickly at the moment and it could present a good buying opportunity. And that stock is Accenture. And we can see over the last year, this company's stock is down around 17%. And over the last five years, they're up around 83%. So they are outperforming the market over the five-year chart. And basically for those watching this video who don't know, Accenture is a basically a leading global professional services and consulting company. And they have 738,000 people servicing clients in more than 120 countries. So basically they are a very diversified global consulting company. And so in this video, I'm just going to look into some of the recent news that's come out surrounding this company and then figure out the intrinsic value per share for the company so we can know if this is a good time to buy into this stock from a value investing perspective. And so right here, we can see this article talks about how Accenture recently broke 200 million in revenue for New Zealand. And we can see right here, they touch on how in New Zealand, Accenture hit 200 million which is up $135 million over the last two years. So definitely a ton of growth for their brand on an international scale. And so if I look in this article right here, we can see if I scroll down a little bit, they point out that Accenture basically is one of the biggest competitors in this industry at the moment. They're one of the largest global consulting service companies at the moment. And some of their competitors, like the big four accounting firms that you might heard, might have heard about, like KPMG and PricewaterhouseCoopers, these companies are doing global revenues of around $35 billion, whereas with Accenture, they're doing revenues of around $60 billion, as you can see right here. So they are one of the world's largest professional services firm and this figure has more than doubled in the past decade so this company is definitely expanding their global footprint at the moment and it's really interesting to see that this company actually started out just as like an independent spin out from arthur anderson which is another professional services firm and now accenture is growing extremely large just all by itself so definitely interesting to see how this company has grown pretty substantially over the last few years so right here we can see their balance sheets comparing November 30th, 2022 to August 31st, 2022. During that time period, their total assets have increased from around, well not actually increased, they've decreased from around 47.2 billion to 47.1 billion. Their company is financed almost equally between debt and equity. They have around 23 billion in total shareholders equity. And of this shareholders equity, we can see their retained earnings line item has actually decreased from 18.2 billion to 16.9 billion. So it could be a bad sign because it means they have less capital now that they can use to reinvest into the company as well as to distribute to shareholders. And so right here on page four, we can see their income statements comparing the three months ended November, 2022 to November, 2021. During that time period, total revenues are up 5% year over year to $15.7 to billion. And of this revenue line item, I know it doesn't say it here, but I got this information somewhere else in the report. They point out that their consulting revenues were about $844 billion or yeah, billion dollars or million dollars. And of that, it was up around 1% year over year. But then for their managed services revenues, that was about $7.3 billion, and that was up around 11% year over year. So their consulting revenues aren't actually increasing as much as you might want them to, whereas the other areas of their company are really carrying their revenue forward at the moment. And right here in their net income line, I don't think we can see it's up from around $1.8 billion to almost $2 billion here. So that's a pretty small increase, but it is good to see that their earnings are increasing, especially nowadays in the really inflationary time periods we're living in and some of the economic headwinds that a lot of these companies aren't really going to get out of because obviously as the Federal Reserve raises these interest rates, it's going to be harder for these companies to get free money. And so a lot of these companies probably aren't really going to survive these inflationary time periods. 
And so right here on this cash flow statement, we can see they're comparing three months ended November 2022 to 2021. And during that time period, operating cash flow decreased from 530 million to 495 million. Free cash flow actually increased, we can see, because they spent less on capital expenditures. So free cash flow increased year over year from 349 million to 397 million. And then lastly, in financing activities, we can see where they have been re basically redistributing value back to shareholders through dividends and share repurchases. In cash dividends, we can see in the last quarter, they paid around $705 million worth of dividends at around $1.12 per share, which is actually an increase in their dividends per share by about 15% year over year. So that's a pretty big increase there. And then also they repurchased around $1.4 billion worth of common stock. So a ton of value returned back to shareholders, which is definitely always a good sign. And so right here we can see this is a discounted cash flow model figuring out the intrinsic value per share for Accenture. Yahoo Finance basically thinks that they're gonna grow at around 10% for the next five years. They had around eight to $9 billion worth of free cash flow in their most recent year, around $2.6 billion worth of cash on their balance sheet and around 630 million shares outstanding, which puts their intrinsic value per share at $226 per share, which means that at the moment, they are not trading below intrinsic value per share. They're trading at around $283 per share at the moment, which is a little bit higher than the projected intrinsic value for their company. And so on the right side here, I did a competitor analysis comparing them to some of the other companies in their industry, IBM and Gempact. And we can see in comparison for gross profit margin, IBM comes in first, whereas Accenture and Gempact are around tied at 32 to 33%. And then in terms of net profit margin and return on assets, we can see Accenture has the highest in comparison to these two competitors. They have the lowest PE ratio and they have the second highest dividend payouts per share at $3.88 per share. So from a competitor analysis perspective, it looks like Accenture is doing pretty good. You would definitely probably want to invest in Accenture in comparison to the other two companies on this list, mainly because they're pretty profitable with a high net profit margin and return on assets, and they have the lowest price to earnings ratio at the moment, so they might not be as overpriced as their two competitors, especially IBM, which is trading at over 100 times earnings at the moment. But then on the intrinsic value stand standpoint on this side, it looks like they're not trading below intrinsic value at the moment. So based on these current growth rates, they would not be presenting a good buying opportunity at the current share price. But that being said, as I touched on in the last video, from now on, I'm going to be comparing a lot of the companies that I've been covering in these videos against one another. The video we made prior to this one was about Adobe. And we can see that from the share price compared to intrinsic value comparison here, Adobe was trading at around 1.37 times their intrinsic value per share when I made that video. And so Accenture is actually trading at around 1.25 times their intrinsic value. So they are trading at a better buying opportunity at the moment relative to their intrinsic value per share than Adobe was. And so I've ranked them higher than Adobe on this ranking system right here. In terms of growth rate, Adobe had a higher growth rate than Accenture. But actually, when you're looking at these two tables next to one another, it's interesting to see that Accenture is trading at a better price relative to their intrinsic value, even though they have a lower projected growth rate. And usually if you increase the growth rate, the company will end up looking like they're trading at a better value in comparison to their intrinsic value per share. So the fact that Accenture has a better share price compared to their intrinsic value and they have a lower growth rate means they could be presenting at or presenting a much better buying opportunity than Adobe based on these two tables right here. Then if we go further right here, in terms of profitability, Adobe was way more profitable than Accenture. Obviously, they're two different industries. So when you're comparing companies against each other like this, it's not always going to like equate to the same thing. That's what the industry analysis is for that I did before this. But if we're comparing the videos against each other to get a better understanding 
of the companies I'm covering in these videos from like a bird's eye view perspective so we can know which one we'd want to invest in. In terms of profitability ratios, Adobe is more profitable than Accenture. And then in terms of stock performance over the last five years, Adobe returned around 96% over the last five years, whereas Accenture returned around 83%. So Adobe comes in first place ahead of Accenture in that regard as well. So interesting to see how they're comparing against each other. I'm probably going to do a top 10 list right here for the next 10 companies. And then for the companies after that, I'm just going to filter them in to see which ones are in the top 10 and compare them against one another. So not sure what to think of Accenture right now. Obviously, based on the article, they are growing pretty quickly and their stock price is moving up pretty well over the last five years. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of Accenture. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see everyone in the next one.